Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman, and everyone... Welcome into the show. Uh, big, big news because obviously today uh, I've been hyping it all last week and uh, the time has finally arrived. This will be our CES wrap up. Uh, CES 2019 went off uh, without a hitch. I think there was one instance of a robot being hit by a self driving car. Uh, robot on robot violence. It's a horrible thing and we are going to learn how to curb that. Get it? Curbs car. It's going to be good. Uh, joining us, and you may have already heard them in the background, perfectly fine, uh, will be none other than the Popstar crew. They were out there. They were the, uh, you know, hey, they were the, the people in, in the, you know, in the actual event. And looking forward to what they saw, what they had to hear, because we have been, uh, you know, kind of pulling news from what's been happening there. But to actually be there is a completely different thing. Uh, you know, the news, or uh, really the media, We'll try to, uh, you know, kind of touch on the basics, but I'm sure, you know, maybe uh, one of our guests has the exact numbers, but thousands of vendors, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people flock to Las Vegas, and it's more than any one program can ever hope to try to capture. So uh, to do exactly that is uh, Herman Exum, Nathan Evans, PopZara.com. They are regulars here, and uh, and yes, by the way, Herman, that does make you a regular. I think this is like your third or fourth time. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So everyone, before we get started, ComputerAmerica.com, uh, check it out there, full show notes, links to everything, link to our guest website, PopZara. Are. They have a lot of articles and lots of uh, lots of con- uh, content. I believe they will be having, of course, uh, a a podcast. Uh, really, everything that we're talking about and more. Uh, it's really going to be a great time. Head on over there, check that out. And also, while you're there, check out the video portion, twitch.tv forward slash Computer America. Check out our website. Blah blah blah. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, as I said before, Herman Exum, Nathan Evans, Pop Zara. Uh, Nathan was the one being the mastermind behind the, you know, behind the scenes, coordinating, uh, getting everything to go smoothly on one end. Whereas the other end was uh, was uh, Herman Exum and your colleague, whose name I am already forgetting. So, wanted to just bring him on, Herman, Nathan. How you guys doing? Hello, hey. hello. Thank you. Uh, there, you know, in every generation, Ben, there's always a master and a student. It's very Jedi. It's very Jedi like. And, uh, and, and yeah, and but somewhere, in case, and somewhere, there's a Sith case, in there. Who's the? I was going to say, in this case, who's the Jedi and who's the master? I think it's uh, Herman and Chris. Chris Mitchell, by the way, is the editor. You forgot. Chris Mitch, there we go. Yeah, and uh, uh, Chris, I apologize for that, but in my defense, he has never been on the show. So, uh, standing offer, Chris, if you're listening, uh, please, 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 head on over to or come come on the show, and uh, hey, we'll uh, we'll debrief you. We'll uh, we'll do the whole men black <laughs> thing. Uh, we'll flash you with we'll flash you with a pen, not uh, with the pen is mightier than the sword. So, uh, with he's all very that being forgiving. Said, he's very forgiving. Uh, <laughs> he forgives good. you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Chris. But uh, but yeah. So uh, before we go any further, why don't we get it from uh, from Herman himself and just I guess general reactions, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, we weren't out there at CES, but we know it's uh, you know pretty hard to capture the atmosphere there because you can report on you know all the TVs, monitors, toilets that you want, but uh, the event itself has I guess a year uh, you know kind of like a, a yearly mood. How was the mood there? How was the event? Was it uh, was it a good CES? I guess is the question. Well, that statement you you said was uh, it was actually an understatement to be honest. Um, you know, this is this is my tenth year going there actually, so I'm a I'm a vet, and every year it gets busier, uh, more insane, a lot more people. Um, caught a cold, so that was uh, CESs in Las Vegas gift to me <laughs> but yeah it was it was it was decent this time around i mean 
we finally got to see uh, some tech that's been uh, hyped up, uh, crowded around over the past two years, uh, finally coming to fruition. Um, in fact, some of that should be here by the later half of uh, 2019. So uh, things are looking up if you're a tech head. Yeah, well, which I think we are. And Nathan, I, uh, as I said before, mm. you weren't there in person, but I'm sure that you were directing, uh, you know, you were directing Herman and, you know, uh, and Chris to, you know, kind of visit different booths, uh, tech. Was there anything that you were kind of expecting at CES to really be like, hey, you really sure. have to check out this year X? Now, I, I just want a disclaimer. Uh, there are really two ways to look at CES. There's from my position, which is omnipresent. I have access to a web browser, which leads me to see everything, and not everything gets announced before. A lot of it, a lot of it gets announced way before. Herman knows this, yeah. but yeah. a lot of it, a lot of it gets announced at the show, and a lot of it doesn't get announced at all because that's why you have to physically be there. And kudos to our colleagues at other outlets. Uh, some we like, some we don't like, but they, you know, they help give an impression. And like you said, it's too big for any one outlet to cover. So we just. You know, we go there and we try to do the best we can and we try to represent ourselves. But um, I do have a couple of things. I just want to say, first of all, first of all, uh, Herman and I talked about this before. I'll get it out of the way. I have one word for you, Ben. China. <laughs> um, and I have uh, two okay. words, actually. I, 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 Paul, I was lying to you. Two words. <laughs> and those words are uh, which means learn Chinese, because... If you learn Chinese, you will be better suited for the, sh the job. And, of course, neither Herman nor Chris speak the language, although I think they could probably order off a Chinese menu. And it puts you at a serious disadvantage when half <laughs> – and, Herman, you know this – when half the people there don't speak English. And I don't know why Chinese companies would uh, scrub someone up, put a suit on them, and send them over to Vegas without speaking the language. But they do it, and they do it every year without fail. And I well, remember there was a story that came out this year that yeah. the number of Chinese participants was down. Not true. Hmm. Bull, bull plop. Uh, China does not consider Taiwan part of China in some respect. So Chinese and Hong Kong countries were there in spades, and they represented everything. And Herman, you know this. What was yeah, the, as what a was matter of fact, I mean... Um, was it Shenzhen that was there? They had like 50 different subsidiaries? Yeah, uh, yeah, they they had a bunch of different products. Um, I think they're wholesalers though. I, I'm not sure. I mean, they're yeah. definitely, they're definitely trying to sell you something if you approach the booths. Definitely. Well, <laughs> well yeah. And, and, and I mean, it's, real quick, that's their convenience stores pretty much. Yeah. And, and I mean, just real quick, I mean, that is another part of CES where we always think about the consumer electronics show, but mm -hmm. it's more than that where, you know, it may be showing off the latest in consumer tech that uh, companies will be pushing to you in the coming year. But on top of that, it's a place for companies to make connections with other companies so that yes. they can then provide, because I remember my instance of being there, uh, I would approach some, some booths and, you know, being a member of the media, I had in my badge and I'm like, hey, you want to talk to the media? And they look at me and say, go away. We're not here for oh, any wait. media attention. And it's like, oh, okay. So like there are companies that go there specifically to only mm -hmm. interact with other companies. And yeah, uh, yeah. that's it's probably business. what a lot of Chinese was. Could I, uh, I just want a quick follow up. Um, sure. Again, if you go to the Pops Art website, a little self promotion, um, I actually reviewed a movie last week called uh, Ghost Box Cowboy, which actually deals exactly with this. It was just coincidence that it just came out before CES. And in the movie, they show different Chinese suppliers and how predatory they can be to get your business. And to be fair, and I, Herman, you can back me up on this, a lot of the products that we get now in America are basically uh, Chinese suppliers cutting out the middleman. You know, one of the reasons you can get those cheap motherboards and cheap RAM and everything is because they bypass uh, American subsidies and they just directly sell. Mm. That's why if you go to Amazon, you can get all this stuff that's shipped from China. And that's becoming a bigger problem, I think. And it's going to become a bigger problem because that means no customer service. That means a lot of stuff. But you're right. In, in CES, it's basically companies trying to hook up and link up and try to find um, American representation right. for yeah. our, our market. It's sort of an odd combination of uh, professionalism and the Wild West. <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, that's the closest mm -hmm. comparison I can make to it. Um, uh, un unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, it's not, just, it's not just a way for press and media to uh, sugarcoat the newest, the newest and best in tech that may or may not be released to the public. But yeah, 
uh, people are trying to make money out, out there while they're while they're in Vegas. It's big other money. Than, other than it's gambling and <laughs> wasting it all away. It's I, big money, though, Ben. It's huge. Uh, well, so. yeah, you know, when you tell me it's the Wild West out there, uh, I have seen plenty of um, Red Dead Redemption, so I know what happens in the Wild West. And let's hope there's a little bit less horse dragging people by ropes in at CES, but who knows? Yeah, it's uh, just a lot more noise and a <laughs> lot more lights. Yeah, absolutely. So, and and if you don't mind, uh, so the general feeling, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the general feeling. You said that this was a you know uh, pretty much a good CES. Of course, more Chinese mm-hmm. representation. So you know that's, I I think we all know that's just going to keep happening more and more and more until uh, you know as uh, macroeconomics at which I am not uh, well, capable of talking can I make, about. Should I make a prediction? Sure, absolutely. Go for I, it. I, this is going to sound ludicrous, but I don't know, Herman, if you agree with me or not. I actually don't even think we've seen. I think this is just the iceberg. I don't think we've even seen it yet. I think this is just the beginning. To quote, to quote the great Sean Connery in a movie that nobody's seen, Avengers, uh, this is just the beginning. And when these Chinese companies actually start owning IP and they actually start uh, having representation in America, we've seen this with Hawaii, what is, which is the company, Herman, that's a, where the CEO is arrested? Hanwei. 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 Yeah. And you yep. have... You have Huawei, you have Hanwei, you have all these different companies. Once they become actual companies, more like Acer and Asus and all this, yeah, then it's going to really kick in. And then you're going to see some action. And, oh, and, yeah. and you really can't feel bad about that because really if they at least make a passable product, I mean, Vizio, yeah. if, if any other company has shown, if you make a good enough product, like I don't think anyone would say Vizio is the highest build quality, but if it's affordable and it does the job, they become one of the best, you know, they become one of the biggest companies. You know what's and, funny? You know well, what's that funny? used to be the case though yeah. uh, for Vizio. Now, um, now other companies like TCL and Hisense have uh, taken the reins in that respect. Uh, I, over the over the past decade or so, it seems like Vizio has been trying to build itself up as a premium company in, for consumer electronics uh, and home theater entertainment. Mm-hmm. So, and that and that's another thing about CES too. There's always an up and comer. Yeah, there's always an up and coming company that's going to be the next uh, standard of affordability or our premium segment uh, hardware. Or, vi- or vying to be. Or to, yeah, or vying, vying to be is more appropriate yeah. there. Which I, like which you know, uh, again, I was not at the event, so I don't know what was you know really trends. But if you guys wanted to get into actually the meat and potatoes, I figured monitors, TVs, uh, just covering it from here at the studio, uh, we noticed that there was a lot of news about really display technology was on display. I'm sorry, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know you how you need guys to work on that. That's you. lame. I don't Lame. know how you guys wanted to ta- uh, wanted to tackle the topics, but uh, I'll leave it to either Herman or Nathan to uh, decide where to take this. Herman was yeah. there, so Herman, you get first. But I just have a few odds and ends I want to talk about after, and you may bring some of these up because I know we've talked before. So let's cede the floor to the guy who's actually on the floor. Sure. Ooh, see yeah. Ben, that's how it's done. That's how you do <laughs> equip. That's no problem. I, I'll I'll kick it off. Well, um, there are three things um, that I think were probably the most important or most covered. Uh, one was, uh, okay, displays. These are in no particular order, by the way. I'm just going, not in, not in terms of importance, but just overall. So the first one was display technology, as Ben said. Uh, okay, so OLED, um, that is, that's evolving. We now have flexible OLED displays and panels uh, that are coming to market this year. It's official now. And LG really kicked it off. In fact, I think they were the best company in terms of uh, TV offerings. Hmm. I mean, you have the rollable T- o- OLED TV, which goes by the series name R, R9 specifically. So when that comes to market, look up that model, uh, LG R9 OLED. Um it only comes in one size, a 65 inch, but it is impressive to to see. Granted, you're probably not going to be wowed if you saw it last year when it was a uh, concept prototype. But last, I think last year, Ben, we mentioned this. They said it was it was coming. It was going to be like a year a year or so away. Mm-hmm. I guess they weren't kidding. LG LG has fulfilled its promise. Uh, Expect it to not be cheap. <laughs> they didn't give a price. 
They did say it was coming in the second half of this year, to uh, 2019. But th- it's still the same. It's still the same concept. It's uh, it's a uh, rollable uh, polyamide. If I, I'm probably butchering <laughs> the pronunciation, and also I'm sick, so please forgive me. But that's how it's able to be flexible um, without any without any tears, rips, or cracks. Um, and this has been one of the like last mile goals of OLED technology, and since. Other than Sony, I think LG has probably had the best showing for TVs. Well, um, and, and, yeah. and just real quick, I mean, the other trend that uh, I guess we didn't see much, or, or at least uh, obviously all the other media outlets didn't cover, maybe if it was there, uh, flexible, bendable, rollable. I also heard about the phone, which you might get into, but uh, bendable displays are one part of it. And then the other part that uh, they were trying to work on, well, there really there were three. Like one was the thinness, which I think rollable kind of covers. And the other one was transparency, where you would have it when the TV is off, the screen would be transparent so you could embed these things into windows and things like that uh yeah was there anything like that there um for the most part um not transparent um when it did come to displays it was once again about resolution and integration i gotcha um the lg rollable one is 4k but um and (laughs) 8k is also upon us i wanted to i wanted to talk about that too bleh Uh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it is official. 8K TV, TVs will be available this year, at, le- at least from Samsung and Sony, which, oh, fun fact on Samsung, on the Samsung part, they already have uh, 8K TV for sale. They've had it since uh, October of last year. So, and it, uh, by the way, it costs $14,000, $15,000. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so what what Samsung had with their lineup are just smaller sizes, more relatively more affordable sizes. Once again, we don't know the price. They'll they'll be expensive, I can promise you that, but they'll be cheaper than fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I, other than LG, I, I mean, uh, we also you know kind of cover here. I'm not sure if it caught your eye, but the uh, the short throw projector from LG, uh, LG, uh, yeah, LG came up I like four times. Yeah, uh, LG came up like four times. Sony and all the other ones you know, here or there, but they really didn't make the headlines that LG did. No, I mean, you really can't beat the awe in the awe wondering spectacle of a TV that just rises out of a base. Emerging, <laughs> seeming, yeah, from just out of, like, out of thin air, sort of. It's, a lot of publications yeah. have called it magic, mm-hmm. and I guess that's appropriate, but however, I'm not nine years old, so... <laughs> <laughs> I it's, was going to say... It it's a technical rose, achievement for sure. Well, it rose like Michael Jackson rose from the stage at the Super Bowl in nineteen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't think they want that designator, but... So, it, yeah, I mean, I mean, you couldn't compete with that. So what uh, Sony and Samsung have done is just focus on 8K. Um, right. By the way, the Samsung model is called Q900FN. And Sony had theirs, um, which is the Z9G. That's mm-hmm. also an OLED model. Um, and they only come in sizes of 85 and 98 inches. Makes sense. Uh, what, what, and really, at, at that size of resolution, um, you know, it, it's kind of like your iPhone or, you know, whatever these high-end flagship phones. You can squeeze resolution, but it doesn't mean anything. Uh, with an 85-inch TV, 8K actually, you know, it has a different look to it as opposed to just 4K on on a 65 inch. Uh, that kind of makes sense to me. But uh, obviously, yeah. the big thing there is 85 inches. That's that used to be about the top end for consumer TVs, and now it's like everyone has at least one offering of that. Uh, do you think larger and larger TVs are in our future? I I do think. Uh... Yeah, I think they're going to get larger. Uh, I would say that 100 would 100 inches would be the maximum before they have to start getting creative. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be a modularity uh, besides besides resolution, which by the way, uh, I heard Nathan groan a couple minutes back when I mentioned 8K. He is knocking <laughs> off. He is knocking my list off. By the way, you are hitting some of my. Uh... Best and worst. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I gotta agree with you. I gotta agree with you, Nathan. Uh, uh, 8K. Stupid. It is stupid, but 
it seems to be more of a uh, penis waving <laughs> between these conglomerates. Which, because... which, by the way, which, by the way, you're getting dangerously close to get another thing on my list. Oh I'll boy, like so... well, we'll get to that soon enough. But uh, the biggest issue I have with 8K displays uh, being shown and eventually coming to market is uh, content because there is none. None there, that I've. Seen. There will be one piece of content, and and I was uh, I was thinking this, but but now I can say it. Um, if you buy an AK TV, you better really super enjoy the Olympics because that is the only event in the next two years that will be natively filmed in 8K in Japan. Everything else will be upscaled from 4K or even worse, 1080P, and it's just going to be like kind of magic that it's 8K. Nothing is for you, I guess. Well, you know what the funny thing is, Ben? And Herman, back me up on this. Is that they film, they can film the Olympics in whatever K they want, right? They could do it. I mean, they already do, but I think they already film the Olympics in 8K already. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Forget that they film it. Olympics don't sell TVs. You know what sells TVs? Cheap World Cup TVs sell TVs. You want to you wonder why 4K took off? Not because of video games, and certainly not because of the Olympics, because the World Cup, and they had companies like... Um, ProScan, ProScan and Hisense selling budget crappy 4K TVs for like 200 bucks. That's what made 4K fly off the shelves. Mm. And 8K, oh my God! I first of all, 8K shares my award for most useless thing at CES with 5G. And the only reason 5G gets the get actually edges it out for being the worst is because it was a fraud, and it made news for being a fraud. AK, no, no, no. This is how you screw up a format rollout. We're, we like 4K. We're still getting used to 4K. Almost nothing's in 4K. Let us get used to 4K before you make us feel guilty. So screw you for AK. We don't need you. Go away. <laughs> I, I really do think uh, there's an interface war behind this, sort of, so to speak, between uh, HDMI and DisplayPort. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, earlier this year, HDMI version 2.1 came out. Right. Um, and... That's that's the biggest draw of uh, it's one of the biggest draws of the new HDMI spec is 8K resolution at 60 frames per second or 60 hertz or whatever you want to call it, and yeah, I just think that um, I do think that they're jumping the gun a bit. With this 8K probably shouldn't come out like people shouldn't get excited for that until maybe 2022 at the well, earliest. I don't. Right, but yeah, there's just no content. Would you agree, though, that the mistake they're making isn't that AK isn't cool? I'm sure it would be cool when it's perfected. Oh, no, it but, looks fantastic. But, but they're, they're presenting it as a consumer thing. And, and honestly, unless you're into fish or Olympics, don't get excited about it. Because that's all that's going to be on the damn thing is fish, you know, in some 8K aquatic wonderland and ugly athletes breaking records. And every time they show those ugly athletes, they always dial the... Have you ever noticed they saturate the color so it looks like a cartoon anyway? It looks yeah. like you're playing, like, Mario Tennis. It doesn't look real. It looks otherworldly. But I guess in other areas, uh, there does seem to be uh, conformity. Uh, Dolby Vision, which is a competitor to HD, uh, HDR, uh, color gamut uh, mm -hmm. enhancement, that seems, to be, that seems to be becoming a standardized feature with a mainstream TVs now, which is good. Yeah. So I, I guess yeah. there's that. There are winners <laughs> and there are losers. Yeah. And that's what that's what it's all about. So I would say that I would say the current consumer, if they're looking to buy a TV within this year, are the winners, but everything else is just sort of it it's well, just it's just a dream. And just I'll like, I'll leave this trying to sell you. Yeah, and, and, and I'll leave this up to you, uh, but you know, maybe from display technology to display technology, another uh, part of CES that was really covered was, uh, I'm sorry, were computer monitors. Uh, we saw like uh, LG, again, had I think like a 39-inch one screen, and then there were others like Razer had one, uh, their first standalone monitor. Uh, you know, display technology, TVs, and computer monitors seem to also kind of have their own uh, you know, kind of surge of products. Uh, that that uh, that is true to a degree, and a, I think a lot of that has to do with the uh, Nvidia and, a and AMD. Uh, mm. Before the right before the show, Nvidia 
introduced their RTX 2060 graphics card, which yep. is supposed to be their uh, mainstream option. It still costs three hundred fifty dollars, though. But it's their mainstream op, mainstream option. And then a couple of days after, AMD finally announced uh, their newest uh, graphics card, uh, the Radeon Seven. Right. Um, I guess the I guess the uh, process is smaller. I think it's at seven. I think nine or seven millimeters. So seven. it may not have like the physical horsepower, like the RAM or anything. But because it's more, it's built more efficiently. It may ed, it may even out in the end for AMD. By the way, the Radeon Seven comes out next month on the seventh. Yeah, for well, everyone else. For Herman, you men- well, you guys both mentioned uh, consolidation, and Herman, you mentioned conformity, and yeah, for me, this is this was actually the nicest piece of news of CES, which I don't know if it counts as CES, but I'll count it. Uh, and Ben, you and I talked about this too, um, the fact that a- uh, Nvidia is seeding the the syncing war, and they're going to allow. G-Sync to work with AMD uh, FreeSync monitors. So, it, yeah, that pretty much also proved a suspicion that you and I had, Nathan, about uh, mm-hmm. that stuff being on lockdown. Yeah, I we mean, talked they, about this. We yeah. talked about this quite a bit. Just, just to try and, you know, promote their brand or their technology. Um, to to be honest, people didn't even like, people never really liked that. The, the case against G-Sync versus FreeSync it, the, it, I'm I'm happy that uh, a, Nvidia came to their senses. They, I well, mean, it, they, it, it doesn't seem like they it doesn't seem like they like that they had to do that. But uh, doing you're, you're, it, your guy, the uh, who's the Nvidia? Who's the CEO of Nvidia? He's the Chinese guy who looks like he's seventy, but he dresses like he's forty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? Jensen Jensen Huang. Yeah. And he like he looks like Grandpa with a biker jacket and. He came out and threw a lot of shade at AMD, and there's a big story where he called their performance lousy. Yeah, and AMD, I, I, I read that. Yeah, and AMD in return says, I don't think... And But AMD made a very good point. And Ben, you and I talked about this when we talked about when Herman reviewed the Invi- uh, NVIDIA G- um, RTX cards. He said, yeah. the ecosystem's not ready. Hmm. And there was a whole train of broken promises. And, and to finish the thought, my thought is that Herman reviews a lot of gaming monitors for the Popzara site, and none of them have G-Sync. They almost exclusively have FreeSync because they're budget. And that's a problem because if you're buying a budget gaming monitor and it doesn't work with your NVIDIA card, what's it going to work with? Got to get an AMD. Pretty right. cheap. One of, the, one of the biggest issues with trying, because I, believe me, I've tried to uh, review uh, G-Sync capable, capable monitors. However, when I talk to these companies, they say they cannot uh, seed them out because they're in low supply and also, yeah, it, it's a premium thing, G-Sync is, compared to FreeSync. FreeSync is open it's, as heck. It's not yeah. a premium that consumers are willing to climb, though. That's the thing. <laughs> if you want to expand the market, if you want to expand the market, AMD is the way to go. And not because we have a preference, but if you have a $200 gaming monitor, yeah, it's not going to be the best, but it's $200. Yeah, versus, I think, 700 400 uh, yeah, yeah, four to 700 minimum. Like... I don't want to. I don't want to give anybody any free advertising. But there was a, a budget monitor that Herman reviewed just not too long ago, and the thing was sub two hundred dollars, and it had every bell and whistle. Was it the best bells and whistles? No, but they were bells and whistles, and you didn't need to mortgage your house to get into that kingdom. And that's yeah. pretty, that's pretty uh, to me. That's interesting. That's interesting. So and, so yeah, to I'm prevent. Glad, I'm glad AMD. I'm glad AMD seated. I'm so, glad. so to prevent myself from jumping in, and we could talk about this for another half hour instead. Uh, I'm going to, if you don't mind, throw it back over to Herman. And so, from TVs, monitors, things like that, obviously huge. You said that you had three different things that were kind of the most covered, caught your eye. Uh, what were some of those other topics? Well, uh, before I move on to the next, the okay. second thing that uh, caught my attention, and we're going to talk about that in pretty deep, in like good detail. Um, I did want to, I did want to cover this. It's a company called Royal, uh, R O Y O L E. They they have uh, brought out a flexible smartphone. It's also an OLED screen. It's called the um, it's called the Flex Pi. I got to play around with that. It was uh, I was actually impressed with it. However, it's it's available in China, but not in the U.S. quite yet. But hmm. that 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 was. Uh, 
my first ever time being able to play with a flexible, with a smartphone that had a flexible screen on it. I, it, it, I it, can't, had the, it had the wonder effect to it. I'll, I'll give it that. I can't even, find, you know, Google, I, I, admittedly it's not uh, Dragonfly, but um, yeah. I can't find anything about this thing here on Google. Mm-hmm. So that, that's a problem. Yeah, you basically you can fold it like a book so there will be a screen on each side and you can still use it like a like a phone or you can lay it flat so it can be in tablet mode but apparently it is available right now if you, if anyone wants it right now they'll have to import it from china <laughs> so there's that but uh-huh. it is well equipped i mean it has I think it has a snapdragon uh, 825 processor in it i mean i mean you won't go wanting I mean, the resolution's what? It's 1920 by 1440, so, yeah, whatever. But there you go. I first fold- <laughs> TV, the first foldable, I said TV, first foldable <laughs> smartphone that I know of that's ready, readily available. Yeah, I, I, I actually found it. The FlexPi, $1,300. Um, you know, the flexing technology looks pretty good. You know, it doesn't distort the image too much. Um, that is interesting, and you're right. That wasn't really covered. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... I think I think there was a publication that covered it. They called it delightfully horrible. I'm well, looking at CNET's coverage of it, and CNET has a video of it actually bending and being used. So can, interesting. Yeah, and can I bring up a point as a as an editor real sure. quick? One of the reasons uh, we don't see a lot of coverage on weird stuff like this is because it's not SEO friendly. <laughs> and when you ha- when you only have so much bandwidth, and this goes for everybody, right? But if you're a CNET, or if you're a Verge, or if you're an Engadget, if you know if you're you got a lot of money invested in this stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of your advertisers depend on you covering their products, and and I don't want to shame them, but let me shame them a little bit. And the fact is, is that you, Herman, you know this. You've been here enough times. You know the coverage has been decided before the show even starts. Yeah, it's and actually so, been decided. Uh, I think in the second week of December. yeah, exactly. And so they're not interested in slumming it in what we call affectionately. By the way, if you're out there, you're from China or Hong Kong, Taiwan, or whatever, affectionately called Chinatown where you have these giant halls that are basically all Chinese companies. The English is on the wall, literally. Uh, No one speaks English, and it feels like you're in Kowloon. Like, you just want to order some dumplings, but you can't. You have to buy uh, keyboards, mice. And so they're not interested in stuff like this unless they pay for advertising. And it's hard because a lot of this cool stuff you might not ever see if someone talk about it. Absolutely, yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's a lot it's more a, interesting than 8K, I'll tell you that, or fake 5G. By the way, AT&T, <laughs> shame on you. Yep, and that's the second thing I want to get into, actually. Thank you for segueing into that for me. Shame, like, like Game of Thrones. Shame, shame, shame. Yeah, uh, 5G was another big focus of uh, CES 2019, but it seemed to be just... We, 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 we flipped the switch, basically. Uh, there, there were no, there were no actual smartphones that you could use. I mean, they had demos, but they weren't turned on. Or they had stickers. They were, in, they yeah, had they had spares. It's like we did it, kinda. <laughs> so, but, and, yeah, and 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 just and, and if you don't mind, just real quick for all of our listeners out there who are not familiar, four G, four G LTE are pretty standard. Most uh, high end cell phones have at least four G, if not four G LTE. Five uh, G supposedly the next standard. It's um. It's for, you know, kind of a uh, cell service and whatnot. Uh, the throughput, I think, is tops out at like 10 gigabytes per second or so, or, or 100. I, th- I think it's 10, though, it's, up and um, down. I think um, the, the peak data rate is sitting at uh, 20 gigabits per second. Yeah, it, it, it's really up there. Like, it's, uh, it's really, really fast compared to 4G LTE, which I think tops out at 1. So from going from 1 to 20, you should have a lot more data throughput. You can do a lot more cool things. You can... Uh, be much more data hungry and uh, everything that comes with it. But again, to be clear, 5G is not available to you no matter where you are right now. There is no 5G currently on the market. But uh, yeah. yeah, so well, just a little intro. But, here's here's yeah. how they trick. Here's how they get you. They they say they flip the switch, but that yeah, you're you're right. There are no actual smartphone products that have it built in yet. Is, uh, yeah, it, as far as I'm concerned, them. Formally announcing 5G to the masses at CES, uh, it, yeah, you're gonna have to get that at the Mobile World Congress where they actually introduce the smartphones here. Mm-hmm. I think it's in February next month. You'll really see coverage on 5G, like actual, real coverage of 5G next month. 
Right. Well, so. I think this, I think um, the way we saw with 4G coverage, with the Verizon <laughs> maps and everything, is that 5G will become more of a buzzword to sell it to consumers when it becomes, when it becomes available. And again, I'm a little disappointed that AT&T would manipulate, uh, tr- well, attempt to manipulate the press <laughs> by, by having a fake uh, 5G phone with a sticker that was not that. And that to me, was hilarious. Yeah, that I is, found that, that is, funny. That is, that is not a case of like showing a workstation at like E3 where you have a video game playing on a PC. Mm-hmm. This is fraud. Like it was actually mis- it was misdirection in a way that, frankly, Herman, I don't think I've ever seen such a thing. It's was it a, was it an actual sticker or because the article I read it was said that uh, yeah it was on the screen right I, I, and and of course I don't know if you guys are talking about the same thing but from what I saw 4G uh, changed the operating system to instead of displaying 4G LTE they mm-hmm. bumped up like they gave it like another antenna and they called it 5G E and yeah. the E stands for the evolution of 5G but not 5G and that can be misleading. It was misleading because it's confu- it's a confusing technology, and a lot of the people that cover this sort of stuff, uh, like at the CNNs or the Fox News, you know, the non-tech press, they just believe whatever they're told. And again, a lot of these companies, Ben, not to get into the conspiracy well, but a lot of the, the major consumer um, news outlets are owned by technology companies or have subsidiaries. And so it's in their best interest to start promoting this technology now. And if they promote a falsehood, it could give the wrong impression. It could give the wrong impression about adoptability, and it, it creates quick. market confusion. And to me, it's Real disappointing quick. because yeah. I want to see it roll out honestly, and I want to see it less confusing, and that's probably so, not going to happen. So real quick, and uh, Herman, feel free to jump in here too, but uh, I'm already kind of picking up the same kind of sense where marketers are obviously in overdrive when it comes to CES. Uh, 8K TVs, you guys weren't happy. 5G, or at least the illusion of 5G, not happy. <laughs> Thank do, you, you very much. Do, do you see that kind of so same much. thing where it's like the marketers find a term and, they're, and they won't be the first ones out there to, to get the attention, and it's, uh, it's a marketing thing more than any kind of technology thing oh of course at, at <laughs> this point in time i mean they have they have no like actual proof of concept like nothing real world all they just have are demonstrations so um, at the qualcomm uh, booth that was just mostly 5g uh into the intel booth was uh, next door they they were pushing 5g I, I think those are the two main manufacturers of 5g chips so they they have a lot they have a lot riding on this and it's obvious. I mean they well, have to they have to promote this stuff or well or be left stag- behind or yeah, be left, left behind. I mean yeah they're promoting five G ooh five is better than four you know of so course. gotta have five. Um, ben there was one company that did not that did not mislead mm-hmm. and to me it's it was probably my favorite company at CES and Herman I don't know if you I think Chris said you might have seen it uh, to me the best company at CES the most Honest company at CES 2019, Kohler. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Okay. delivered. But before you even say anything, if anyone out there watching the video portion, we are going to pull up exactly what you are about to talk about. We can see into the future. Go you know ahead, it? Nathan. You know what I'm talking about? Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. You sound, ex- uh, you sound excited. Okay. I, I all, like it. Kohler. So, Kohler's a great company. And we have. You know how long Americans have suffered using outdated commodes? When we look at our Japanese friends, and the Japanese toilets sing you songs, they make you feel better, they analyze your waste. Finally, finally, we have smart toilets coming here. And if you read the press releases that Kohler gave out, that is amazing. Like, someone was pulling a gigantic d- double entendre. Um, I'll just say this. Herman, you've seen it. The name of the toilet is called the Numi 2.0. <laughs> Numi. Uh, first of all, no one's going to call it Numi. They're going to call it Nummy. Okay, and 2.0 for a toilet. Do not name your toilet to anything. Don't do that. But they did because it's hilarious. And so we have a toilet named after number two called Nummy. I'm just going to call it Nummy. It's intelligent. It's got Alexa. So now Amazon can spy you when you're doing your business. And they have a mirror where Alexa can spy you doing your business. Well, and they have a bathtub where they can spy on you doing your business. And, and, I love it. That have, does that toilet have a bidet in it? Yes. It does should, that have a bidet? Of course. I think of it course. does. So, it's also got 
It's also got fully immersive experience with lighting and audio enhancements, yeah. which the every toilet needs. Mean? And, 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 and speakers, great. and speakers. You know, so if, if you if you did not hear the satisfying plop that you were looking for, don't worry, it's going to be surround sound. Uh, no, uh, and, and you know, we're looking at the Kohler website right now, and actually, this also kind of speaks to a trend that I think was out there, but you'd have to confirm for us, Herman. Um, I think if someone tried to sell you the idea of an Alexa connected toilet two years ago, you'd say, wow, we really have reached the bottom of the barrel. But Kohler is pushing an Alexa connected toilet. Uh, Digital assistants and this toilet, I mean, was it just ubiquitous? Uh, you think you, you always think there's a bottom, but no, they've got well, so much lower. They've got we, so much lower to go. Herman, it was just yesterday we were laughing about the Alexa microwave, and now yeah. we have, and now we have a toilet. But again, I think this is great. I think this is amazing, and I actually think this could actually be a godsend to older, old, uh, elder users who have to suffer crappy technology sold through them through TV uh, commercials with outdated film stars from the 70s. Yeah. And, and by the way, I don't like the idea of Alexa. I don't like the idea of Alexa anywhere. I still yeah, I, I was I, I'm, on the toilet. I wanted to bring that up. I do not trust Alexa. And I'm certain, I certainly don't trust Alexa when I'm doing my business. The bathroom is a private place. It is zen. You say that something. now, but then you say Alexa order two ply. Okay, Herman. Supply and same day delivery. You can wait. You Look, you, how you can always you, have to be? you you can always be there standing in front of your uh, your Alexa connected mirror, washing your hands, and go Alexa tweet that, and you would be surprised uh, uh, what comes uh, out. It's it, it's going to be interesting. But, but I it, love their but I love their names, Ben. Real quick, sure. perfect fill. You know they have words like perfect fill. Uh, what else they have? Oh my goodness, it's just. It wasn't vaporware, though. That's the thing. They delivered. They had a product, and it cost a lot of money. Well, it has but ambient lighting, too. Am- and yeah. Well, every toilet needs this. And, and again, I just want to say, it's a, it's, a, it's a smart toilet that's called a 2.0. And mm-hmm. I just want to say slow, Captain, you know, slow clap, so Orson Welles clap so. for Kohler for pulling this off. Because you know what you did, and we know what you did. And it is great. You well, win CES. I do like the I do like the Kohler intelligent toilet. I think that's what they it, yeah they just call it, some people just call it an intelligent toilet. But I would much rather get I'd rather they'd make a version of it that doesn't have Alexa on it because that that's they do they sell right those there. all the time for a hundred dollars. By the way, it's seven thousand bucks, and if yeah. you want it in black, it's nine thousand. Why <laughs> why more for black? Uh, it's doesn't sleek. show dirt. Modern. <laughs> you know what though? I, I'm not joking. I'm not being facetious. I actually think it was my favorite product, and yeah, yeah I think it was my favorite my favorite product line of CES because that makes a lot of sense. That's a consumer electronic yeah. thing that makes sense to me. It works. I I just have issues with maybe Alexa. Uh, I I would think yeah Alexa. Th- if they do add features like stool monitoring for health purposes, I could mm-hmm. see that being used for evil. Yeah, or just uh, blackmail. There, there's there's a lot to be worried about when it comes to the flow of data and what flows out of you is nothing but data. Well, and it you're can, learning, you're doing better. It it and it can get sticky um, with this whole situation. So I stinky, a stinky, sticky. It uh, it can be pretty bad. But but you know they also showed off a mirror and a, and a spa tub. Uh, Kohler, uh, you know, if nothing else, I'm I'm happy to say that Kohler being one of the best showing companies out there for consumer tech. Uh, really shows that, you know, AT&T, NVIDIA, AMD, hey, maybe people just want to see cool gadgets in, you know, uh, well, well at, at least media wants to see cool gadgets. Well, final thought, Herman and I are very pessimistic about Alexa, and frankly, any sane person should be pessimistic about Alexa. However, I do think that war is lost. I think we're on the, I think we're in the minority. I think the vast majority of people don't care enough about it. Um, it's kind of like people with cell phones driving. You know you shouldn't do it, but you yeah. still do it, and you cause accidents. Yeah. And so, Alexa, you win this. You win There's... the war, but we're gonna, we're still gonna, we're still gonna keep you honest. Yeah. The, the fact the... of the matter is, it does, like, I don't like Alexa, but for for the majority of people out there, it's probably more of a benefit than a disadvantage. Right. So there's, there's that. There's about a billion uh, Google Assistants, um, you know, programs and instances of Google Assistants out there, thanks to smartphones and Androids. And there's about a hundred million Alexas out there, thanks to Amazon and their efforts. 
Uh, and, and of course, uh, we also saw a lot of coverage of smart speakers and smart freestanding displays that integrated these in there as well. Uh, if you don't have a digital assistant, I'm expecting by next year, this year, next year, um, you will have your pick of the litter of you know dozens or hundreds of products that will give you that functionality. You, you know, you know who must be sad a little bit. I mean, Apple doesn't go to CES. They don't. Uh, there was a lot of there was some Apple news with AirPlay two and how it's going to come to things, but what a waste, huh? Apple Apple was the first to do this and they just dropped the ball. They, we could have <laughs> had an, we could have had an eye toilet, uh, you know. We could have had, and, but they and, just dropped. And you know the only reason I think that Apple didn't do that, and working on a tangent here, but uh, is that Google has Google, you know, and thanks to their ass assistant, they have a lot of data that they can collect and learn from, and of course speech to text and things like that. Uh, Google had a lot of data to pull from. Amazon had data because they're Amazon. Uh, Apple didn't have that kind of data. They I, like they have like iTunes. They just don't have the ingestion of data to make a good AI well, like the other two did. You know what's funny? They knew what they were doing though, because I don't know if either of you guys saw that thing they did they actually bought a sky they bought one of the big buildings at e uh, ces and they put oh a yeah and they threw shade on everyone yeah they else. threw shade they 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 didn't show up at ces as a as a exhibitor but they did show up as an advertiser yeah it's a shame and i think that's that's sour grapes on their part i mean i applaud apple i mean no one's stealing apple's data but at the same point i mean they they missed the ball on this one and that's uh mm. that's gotta hurt them a little bit okay that, that's certainly fair so, Herman, uh, uh, anything else that you saw that uh, people should really know about other, other than uh, toilets and uh, things like that? Um, robots, AI. Um, that's, <laughs> you that's say that third. so doldrum, just so, <laughs> oh, hum, robots, well, those things. Well, I, I, I say that, I say it like that because... Been there, done the ro robots, what's that? <laughs> they have been, yeah, they've been pushing this for the past four years. It's just a continuation of the same thing. It's, things have improved a little bit. But it seems like the exhibitors at CES can't get past the their robots dancing. That's that's <laughs> what that's what attracts people to their booths, where they just put a row of robots and have them dance in front of people. It's like that's the man. That's some good isn't AI that Honda's there. Fault, though? Isn't that Honda's fault with their dancing robot? And I guess China decided that was the cool thing. Was that if Honda did that, then we do that? You wouldn't believe how how many people just love watching robots dance in unison. It's un. It's I suppose I fathom it. I'm just like what, what what's happening? So it, and, and, and it's of like course, watching a, it's like watching a Katy Perry show. It's all robotics. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. I, uh, I I just don't think pe uh, the majority of people take uh, robotics or AI seriously. So that's that's the draw i think that ai has become that buzzword you know kind of like ak kind of like 5g ai uh it has an application and it does very well in that application is it consumer facing no ai is not a consumer facing technology and to sell it as as if it is as if to sell yeah. you know a microwave that is ai um that means nothing and it it should not be a selling point i guess you know the only thing the only thing the only robot i found interesting which um, I had to read about because it was private. I couldn't find them. Uh, this is thing called Lovot, where it's yeah. a it's a robot that is meant to uh, meant we... to be with people who live alone and who suffer from loneliness, which uh, which may also lead to things like depression, overall depression, and obesity. I thought that was I thought that was kind of neat. So the companion robots, which I think you can only buy in pairs of two, if if I recall, because you know well, th they themselves the get kind of anxious. So, oh yeah, what was, well, well, what, what was the name of this? What was it called? L O V O T. It's spelled L O V O T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Oh, it is cute. Looks like a Furby. It, it, it's meant yeah. to be almost penguin. No, it looks like a Teletubby. Think, right? Like a Teletubby. Almost like a penguin. I think is, was the design influence. So basically, it's going to learn your like your mannerisms and things like that. At first, when you unbox it, uh, it'll be shy, but then it'll warm up to you and it'll actually uh, vie for your attention and look for hugs. Mm -hmm. But it's it's supposed to be more of a learning process for people who suffer from loneliness and things like that. Oh, so okay. I, I, can see, I can see the idea quick, behind it. Um, you confirm my suspicion. I was looking it up, Herman. It is Japanese. Of course. Yeah. Oh, of course. No, but, I, no, but, you, but didn't, you didn't let me get to that part yet. <laughs> Japan. 
let's let's talk about Japan and loneliness. You hear yeah, that, I Molly? Mean, the dogs are out. Robots are in. I like it. Well, yeah. uh, well, Japan is uh, Japan is the world's uh, largest and fastest growing elder population. There, there's simply not enough young people, and they're not breeding more children. And so you have um, you have the only popula- major industrial nation where there's more people over the age of 65 than under. And the homes are building up, and it's a it's a problem. And depression's a problem for older people, and it's especially a problem when there's nobody to come and visit you. And Japan, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, but it used to be famous where you know the youngsters would take care of the elder patients, and that's just not happening because the younger people don't exist anymore. And so that's yeah, this is interesting to me. I, I think we should follow this. I think it's I think it's a story worth following because I don't know if you guys saw this, but for the first time in history. There was a report that came out last week that for the first time ever, China's population decreased. Hmm. And there's, there is oh. a, yeah, there is a population. No way. Yeah, no, it, it's never happened before. And so what happened is. Well, I, there's a whole thing with Genghis Khan, and I think there was a dip somewhere in there. And no, yeah. there, it, it's really never dipped. Hmm. And what's happened, what's happened is, what's happened is that there's an economic population theory that the more industrialized a country becomes, they eventually hit this uh, peak where population goes down, right. and it happens in in most industrial countries, and it's happening to China. Yeah. So uh, this will this will this will ex- this will happen. Yeah. Well, uh, did you hear uh, about the about the news from a day or so ago about uh, American white like American white people? Um, I guess their birth rates are going down. They've oh, been yeah. down for a, That's while. Been for a while. I think, I think yeah. like the birth rate of, of but those I guess are, yeah. I guess it's to the point where it's kind of concerning. It's not concerning. We have plenty of people that just don't happen to be white. So what's the, uh, either way? That's, I think uh, that was the idea. Is that yeah, num number of white people are birth rates are decreasing. So well, to, to be to be fair, to be fair with yeah. that metric, to be fair, uh, that's simply because the existing population, the legacy population, was white, and as America is a mixing bowl, that yeah. it, it's only natural that would happen, and that's why you see other countries like Europe. By the way, Germany, Switzerland, all that stuff, it's all happening all over the place. The more advanced you become, uh, the less inclined you are to have babies. I mean, 10 years, yeah. I mean, 100 years ago, people had four or five kids. Now they have less than two, and in t- 15, 20 years, it'll be less than one. And that's yeah. what will happen, and they're going to need robots for that, so, robots for everything. So, Herman, I will say, don't worry about uh, uh, the white people, because we keep a lot of spares <laughs> over in Europe. Um, fine. But I oh, do... I, I, um... When I read that article, though, I I thought of that uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, uh, where he's talking to the nurse, just about, well, it's, it won't even matter because everyone's just going to be screwing each other, and then we'll all be just brown. There you go. That that's what we can <laughs> hope for. But I will say that's, uh, what, that's what peak. That's what brought, made me bring that up. We we it's have Curb about, Your Enthusiasm, Larry David. We have about five minutes left, uh, at, at least you know for our recording, and, and obviously uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. But the show might go on, sure. uh, might go long. If it does go long, everyone, I want to point everyone to the podcast uh, for Computer America, and of course the podcast over at Pop Zara. Uh, this Ooh. content, if it does go long, is going to you know going to live on there. So, but for the radio program itself, we're going to try <laughs> to keep it kind of contained. And, uh, and, and obviously there was one topic and I, we did not, you know, because we're professionals, we did not compare notes, but Nathan Mm. made one comment about 40 minutes ago. And I think I know what he wants to at least cover one more time. We covered it here on the show. Mm -hmm. I believe it was on Wednesday or Tuesday. Are we, are we talking about the same thing? We're, we're going to use the phrase personal massager just for everyone. That is the phrase we're going to use. Oh, wait a minute. I, I thought we were talking about the... I thought we were talking about the Tesla car that ran over the the promo bot. No. What are we talking? What are you talking about, Mister <laughs> Filthy Man? No. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, I want to I want to tie these two together. Uh, sure. To me, the the funniest story that came out of CES was, of course, the self driving Tesla Model Six crashed into and quote unquote killed the Russian built promo bot. So apparently, the uh, the Americans versus Russians they're taking it to the streets, <laughs> and there's some evidence that that may have been faked. Really? Surprise. Yeah. Kind of like that um, package, that story a couple weeks ago about the package that exploded with glitter by the NASA engineer turned out to be fake. Um, yeah, go f- go figure that a promo bot, a robot to promote things, might have frauded a story. But um, no, we're talking about the CES rescinding the Innovation Award for the robotic vagina, 
Um, I'm uh, going to mispronounce it. I think it's called the Ose. It used to be yeah. called the Gila. I don't think it and, was a vagina, though, so just to be clear. Um, it wasn't a vagina. Vagina. Yeah. Pl- I mean, the, uh, it was oh, a massager. Yeah. I want to say this. I don't know what exactly it would be. It's not a robotic vagina. It's, it's a robotic. For, it's, well, it's, first of all, it's for women, so let's just kind of get that. For your... Well, you see, that's not true. That's that's the part that I'm going to get into. That's why I'm going to I'm going to mirror it with this robotic uh, promo bot because the story came out that uh, this device, the OSA, aka the Vila, quote, the world's first hands-free device for the holy grail of orgasms, the blended orgasm. Their their quote. Uh, it was selected as a CES Innovation Awards honoree, mm-hmm. and then it came out during the show that the award was taken off. So, and Herman, I talked to you about this, and I was I was a little upset this happened. Uh, the CEO was called Laura, Laura Haddock, and she's come out. Uh, she's the CEO of uh, Laura DiCarlo. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I want to be clear about this, because I didn't read about this anywhere else. Um, they rescinded the award back in October. Mm-hmm. This is not a new story. This is not a new thing. And it seems that the announcement of the rescission was timed specifically during CES to maximize uh, earning potential for this company. Oh, you mean and, conveniently. Well, the problem is she, she put out some falsehood that she was banned from the show. She wasn't allowed, but she was there. I think you guys even saw her at, at Showstoppers. Well, we, we, they had a booth there. Yeah, However, exactly. they, did, they didn't have the actual product sure. uh, on display. Um, it's but probably, they, probably to were, play, play up the uh, controversy. Yeah, and so uh, this PR... This PR campaign, and I'm not denying that what CES did was bad. It was goofy. I have words to say about that. But the hashtag uh, CES gender bias was launched, and uh, apparently there's going to be some uh, resource, fu- you know, there's going to be some funding for this product. So it worked out because she's a very savvy person. Um, but the truth is, a CES does have a gender problem, and they're, you know, quite notoriously, they, d- they didn't have any female speakers. They would cancel this. There does seem to be some evidence that they didn't bias against other robotic pleasuring devices, both for men and women. So CES does have a problem, uh, but I don't think it was handled well by this company. And I think whatever real conversation we could have had uh, is lost in, in what's in this Twitter shaming. And I was really disappointed because I'm going to be honest with you, Ben. I was ready to talk with this woman. I was ready to get her side, and I still might. But I'm less inclined because I don't want to be part of a promotion. And I think my, my gut instinct is that she's very, very happy that this happened to her. So, and, and just to uh, kind of jump in here, Herman, Herman, if you don't mind, uh, everything that we, that you just said uh, kind of echoes what we said here on Computer America. <laughs> we, uh, it, it, hashtag gender, CES gender bias, if you do search Twitter by that, uh, if you dig down far enough, you will see that we actually tweeted our show uh, under that as well, just so, you know, kind of we get our feelings out there. But yeah, it, 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 it made it feel like... Um, uh, this whole award was at the discretion of CTA, who runs CE, uh, CES, and CTA made their position very, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of laid out. It's like, hey, uh, the award should go to things that we don't find morally objectionable, and the fact that this happened at all, you know, it, it's kind yeah. of their decision. It happened, and I don't like yeah. that language, morally but, objectable. I, obje- I object yeah. to that. I object to that language. Well, well, so. and, and and again, to be clear, uh, in the press release, they cited about like the sex doll, and they cited like the VR porn, and like that stuff did not win an award either. But it was welcome to display, which they were as well. I don't think it was biased that way. But hey, uh, there's music playing in the background, and uh, if you guys don't mind, we are going to wrap up. Uh, Nathan, uh, let's see. So Herman. Uh, let's start with you. Uh, any of your coverage, where can they go to find uh, or anything that you want to point out and point people to? What should they be on the lookout from you? Sorry, you, you, you broke up there for a second. I, what, what was that? I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, real quick, uh, Herman, any any articles coming out that people need to know about? Oh, yeah. Well, uh I'm working on I'm working on a wrap up right now. It's just it's just going to be a broad uh, sort of description of the show. Um, so, some products I'll describe some some of the uh, uh, goings on in Vegas. You know, I gotcha. I, I'm just going to cover the the bigger stuff. Um, in my opinion of it, well, where the where the industry is going, all that good stuff. All right, so perfect. it an article articles are coming. Hey, yep, and uh, and Nathan, uh, I'm sure you're going to point everyone to Pop Zara. Everyone will have a link in the show notes. Hey, everyone, Mm -hmm. thanks so much. Hey, catch you next time. Bye. Thank you.